Today we're doing a Q&A here in Joshua Tree. This has been a fantastic place to hang out and take photos and videos. Staying in this beautiful Airbnb, I will be answering your guys' questions that you submitted over on Instagram. So thank you to everyone who submitted a question. If you wanna be part of the next Q&A, I will leave my Instagram down here. So make sure you go and follow me over there. So let's jump into the first question. Have you ever had trouble with drone restrictions? The answer is no. In Australia, it is pretty chill with the drone restrictions. You can fly just about anywhere except obviously over crowded places and around airports. I'm actually about to go to Canada where the drone laws are much stricter than here in the US and even back home. For me, I just really don't wanna cop the fines because some of them are very big. So I try to research the rules and laws of where I'm going ahead of time. Next question, if you could offer one piece of advice to someone starting out, what would it be? I think the first piece of advice is obviously just to practice, 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 keep on shooting. And the next piece of advice I would give is to ask your friends and family what they think of your photos honestly and get them to give honest feedback. If you feel like they're not giving you honest feedback, you can also turn to the internet. You can put your photos out and ask for constructive criticism. I have a channel dedicated to that on my Discord as well where we give constructive feedback on photos. This will enable you to grow really quickly. A lot of people don't like hearing bad things about their work but I think if you can swallow your pride and take on that feedback it will make you a better photographer. Do you use auto white balance or custom? So I actually use auto white balance when I'm shooting photos because you can always change that with the raw format and post but when I'm shooting video I'm always shooting on custom so most cameras have this setting it's the Kelvin setting and I will just dial that in based on the scene. It's really hard to remove color casts in post with video so I'll always make sure I dial that in before I start shooting. Best value for money lens for the Canon R6. I definitely think it would be a toss up between the 35 1.8 from Canon and also the 50 1.8 from Canon. They're both really great lenses and they are really affordable. I think it's just a matter of your style and whether you prefer to shoot 35 or 50. For myself, I'm a 35 guy, so I would have to say it's the 35. It's just such a versatile focal length and the 1.8 aperture really helps to separate your subject from the background and it really helps in low light situations as well. Okay, here's another good question. What software do you use for your business slash CRM? So for those who don't know what a CRM is, it is like a database for all your clients and you can create invoices, you've got a calendar, all sorts of cool stuff. I actually use Studio Ninja, which is an Australian company. I highly recommend Studio Ninja, it is fantastic. It has so many automated workflows and templates built in and it honestly saves me so much time with invoicing because it generates invoices automatically. I'll also leave a link down below to Studio Ninja if you guys want to check it out. It's not sponsored at all. I just really like their product. Why don't you share your filmmaking tips? I've been hearing you did rad wedding videos. So yes, that is true for almost 10 years I was a full-time wedding videographer however I shot a lot of wedding videos and I kind of got a little bit burnt out with shooting videography I'm still really really passionate about shooting photos and so I kind of turned my attention towards getting better at photography I definitely will be sprinkling in some videos about making videos on this channel however there are just so many great channels about filmmaking out there and it's hard to know what kind of videos to make tips for shooting in direct Sun. I would say definitely use diffusion if you can and use bounce. So if you're working with a model, make sure that the head is tilted in the direction of the light so you don't create the shadows under the chin and under the eyes. Using a shady part of your location if possible also works really well and you can use a reflector to bounce light back into that area. If you go out into direct sunlight and try to get really great photos, it's gonna be super hard unless you really think about your lighting situation and how you're actually going to remove all those harsh shadows. How do you edit your Instagram pictures and do you use any presets slash do you sell presets? Yes, if you guys have been around the channel for any period of time, you will know that I do sell presets. With the preset pack, you also get a mini course that goes into a little bit of depth about how I actually edit my photos using those presets. Do you think that having two cameras is important? Yes, I actually do think that having two cameras is very important, especially if you are working for clients. If this is your main job and one of your cameras breaks, then you immediately lose all of your work for the foreseeable future until you can replace 
replace it. Definitely if you're shooting something sensitive like a wedding or any event, if your camera goes down during that event, you have no other option. But if you have a second backup camera, then you can continue on the job and the client probably won't even notice. But if you're just a hobbyist photographer, I don't really think that it's necessary to have two cameras. Have you or will you want to visit Canada? I will probably be in Canada when this video goes live, so I guess that's the answer. Opinions on Canon RP. I think that this is one of the best beginner cameras out there and I recommend it to almost anyone who's getting into photography, even people that want to make it a profession. I definitely think that the Canon RP can perform on a professional level as well. Okay, for the last question, how does perfectionism affect photography? pros and cons. I would say that perfectionism can drive you to be a better photographer if you're always raising your standards. However, if it actually prevents you from putting something out into the world because you think it's not good enough, then I think it's getting a little bit toxic. So as long as you tow that line between trying to improve your work at all times, but also not being so obsessed with it being perfect that you don't ever post it, then you should be okay. If you wanna be part of the next Q&A, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. I'll put it down here below. I had a lot of questions and I couldn't get to all of them, but thank you so much to everyone who submitted. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to make a story worth telling and I'll see you guys in the next video.